What is love? I suppose the most misused word in all the English language is the word love. And in our generation, I don't think we have very much comprehension at all about what love really is all about. You know, a young person says, I'm in love. What do they mean? I'm falling in love. Or I love this ring, or I love this sweater, or I love this dress, or I made love last night. We use the same word to describe all kinds of things. It's very much like thank you. And the word love is one of those words that is misunderstood and misused so much today. And I want to talk about that, if I might, a few minutes tonight. Our Lord loved us so much that he gave his only son to die on that cross. Now, the Greeks had four words for love that describe different kinds of love. We have one word, they had four. One was a word called storge, which carries with it the idea of affection. And I'm going to limit that. It covers many areas, but I'm going to limit it tonight to just family love because storge involves the family. And then secondly, the Greeks had another word, the word eros. And the word eros refers to sensual or sexual love. That's where we get the word erotic from. And God's love affects eros. And then there's a third word the Greeks had, phileo. That carries with it the idea of very strong friendship. We get our word philanthropy from it. We get our word philharmonic, the love of music, or Philadelphia, the love of brotherly, uh, city of brotherly love. And it's the word that Peter used when Jesus asked him if he loved him. And he said, you know that I love you, Lord. He used this word. But Jesus wanted another word. He wanted a deeper word. Agape love. This is another word that the Greeks used. They invented this word for the New Testament. This is God's love. And God's love affects the family, and God's love affects eros, and God's love affects phileo. All the other loves can be influenced by agape love. Agape love is a supernatural love, a love that we know nothing about apart from God. It's God's love. It's so deep and so wide and so high and so great and has such dimensions to it that no words in any language can describe it. It's a love that God has for you that in spite of the fact that you were rebelling against it, in spite of the fact that you were a sinner, in spite of the fact that you broke his laws, he gave his son to shed his blood. In spite of everything we've ever done, God loves. And words cannot describe it. And God says the moment you receive his son as Savior, he gives you the Spirit of God to live in your heart, and the Spirit of God produces this love in you and through you. That's the reason Jesus said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It's a supernatural love for your neighbor. You may not like your neighbor. But you can love your neighbor.